Ken, tell, someone tell Ken, 22 minutes. Okay. Well, now that we're uh, through the news here, hopefully the people on the uh, live stream can hear us now. Because we do actually have people on the live stream. Chris and Lee, can you hear us? Oh, okay. Yep, uh, they can hear us. And just their mic is turned off. Uh, so let's go ahead and start in with the uh, main show here. Uh, welcome to uh, the lug. Uh, for those of you who are uh, newer, it's been a little while. Uh, yeah, uh, you found us. Congratulations. Uh, the topic today is uh, Linux Container Showdown. So a little bit of history, a little bit of uh, all the stuff beyond Docker. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we meet uh, the third Wednesday of every month. Uh, usually it's been here. Uh, the best way to uh, keep track is to join either our mailing list or Slack slash IRC channel uh, where we talk about it. Or uh, if you ping me directly, I'll tell you too. Uh, but uh, because we, we do occasionally roam and wander, uh, depending on if someone's nice enough to sponsor us a spot or uh, if uh, whimsy hits us and we decide to be on the other side of town. So. The good news is we do also have a uh, online hangout that apparently people are uh, now visiting. Hello, Chris and uh, Lee. And uh, we uh, are recording uh, this part of the presentation as well. <coughs> we do have IRC and Slack. Uh, they're bridged together, so if you talk on one, you'll hear us on the other. And uh, we've already done that part, so we'll keep moving on. Now on to about our presenter. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm presenting this month. Uh, so uh, basically the slides will be posted up to my uh, uh, personal website after the meeting and I'll send an email out because we have a lot of uh, content uh, to uh, power through here uh, tonight. So with uh, no further ado, on with the show. So first, to cover a couple uh, uh, concepts about uh, Linux containerization, uh, the, the old school way of doing it is uh, via VMs, and that you basically recreate the entire universe and totally lie to the software that's running inside of it, so it thinks that it's running on real hardware. Uh, the other idea is containerization, where uh, you only virtualize parts of it uh, for example, here uh, in the containerized, you can see that you're all sharing the host operating system uh, in Linux, the kernel. Uh, there's always the, the uh, daemon that's uh, running as root, which we'll be talking about in a little bit, that is a massive security uh, amount of heartburn, uh, because if you happen to compromise that, well, you are uh, then in charge. Where with a uh, VM, you're uh, completely running a separate copy of the operating system, which the benefit is that is I'm on my Linux laptop, I want to run uh, Windows or NetBSD for some reason, I don't know why, you can't. Because the entire universe is uh, being recreated there, including the operating system. Uh, so, uh, what would be a presentation without XKCD? In this, uh, they're lying to uh, old uh, software that, uh, uh, let's see, uh, President Reagan is still fine. Uh, another concept that uh, gets talked about an awful lot in this whole space is cattle versus pets. Uh, a whole DevOps uh, perspective sort of is that your uh, servers and your system should be reproducible, and you know what, if one dies, you're not going to shed any tears. Where uh, a lot of the earlier uh, virtualization technology 
role that he spoke server each time he went out. And you know, if it uh, died, you, you had to start from scratch and re-roll it again, and you got money tore up. And the one benefit with cattle is you're not going to do that to your pet. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Don't name your rabbits, too. Uh, so, moving on with the early days of virtualization, uh, you can uh, start out with uh, the, the granddaddy of them all, CH root, which uh, really uh, just changes what folder the uh, uh, your, your process thinks is the, the top one on the tree there. As you can see, basically you redefine root as right there, and then you can't get out of your jail there. Uh, it, as Wikipedia says, it changes the apparent root directory for the current running process and all the children. Uh, it cannot escape out of and see name files outside of the uh, directory tree. The problem with that is it's only file system based protection. Memory is uh, you is, and like network operations and stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's still shared amongst everybody. And so, as you can tell, it's it's better than nothing. Uh, one of the big uses uh, for it, other than trying to fix your broken uh, Linux uh, install, is. Uh, running like say a web server in it, that way if someone happens to own the server, uh, they don't get out and get the rest of your machine in theory, or it's, it increases the barrier to entry, basically. I, I know if you know what you're doing, it doesn't, but it's better than nothing. Uh, so a little bit of a demo here, I'll jump right into the video here because that, that's just for the, uh, the slide here. But as you can see here, I'm uh, just running on a standard uh, Ubuntu image, and I'm going to, uh, one of the big problems with chroot is you have to copy all of the libraries that your executable is going to need into the root itself. And that's what I'm doing here, is I'm just creating the folder structure where uh, bash and ls will know where it's, uh, they're at, because it expects them to be in a certain folder. So I, I'm, uh, as uh, the old PBS uh, host used to say, if you want to uh, bake an apple pie from scratch, you first must invent the universe. Uh, so I'm copying everything. You can see there the libraries I need to get. I just used uh, LDD to uh, ask it, OK, who do you depend on? And then I just quick whipped up a little script to copy the, uh, <laughs> the files into the right spot. Nothing too big. Now you can see I'm going to drop into the jail with just the command ch root and uh, the path, and then to execute the command bin bash. Nothing too big here. And there you can see I'm running as bash. And if you run ls, you can see only the stuff I copied in actually exists. Nothing too big. And if I try and say ls etc, because I mean, we, we have to have an ETC to be run, right? Now uh, you can see it doesn't exist as far as we're concerned. So really easy, really simple, uh, great for installing a, a new operating system if you really want to uh, be copying stuff in and redefining the world. Uh, moving on, uh, uh, BSD jail sort of was the next step along the way. In 1999, uh, FreeBSD uh, picked it up after it was being used in a, a small hosting com web hosting company. Uh, it added in uh, that virtualization that we sort of got with CH through halfway, and uh, added in more security and more uh, uh, because it protected you from being able to escape processors and see memory and all of those things that were missing in CH through. And it also made it a lot easier because it added networking uh, virtualization as well. Uh, the problem is still each uh, of those jails are uh, pets instead of cattle. I mean, yes, you, you can use Ansible or uh, Puppet or Chef or something, 
or sorry, not Ansel, but Puppet or Chef just <coughs> stripped that uh, rollout, but you are rebuilding everything every time, and it's hard to, if I have a jail and I want to give it to you, it's hard to share, if yeah. not in, impossible. Also, uh, obvious to point out, it's BSD, so not available for Linux. Yes. Therefore, from a, a Linux user group perspective, kind of, we don't have to play with that. Yes, but it, it did inspire the next thing here. Uh, so, it also, you're running it on one machine in single point of failure. So, Solaris, again, sort of kept moving out, and it uh, added the idea of being able to uh, control and share and say, okay, your, pro your uh, uh, zone only gets X amount of CPU or memory or those sort of things. So further limiting, further becoming more VM-like. Uh, moving on to the Linux world, uh, OpenVZ uh, is the next thing uh, that came along. It had uh, soft memory allocation, so like say if you only have five gigs of RAM, and you can say, hey, I, I want to make sure that this uh, uh, image only it has at least 100 megs, but you know what, if no one else is using the rest of it, it can go ahead and burst up into it. So it's a soft allocation. Uh, the older version started out with see true uh, isolation. Uh, it eventually now uh, has moved on to uh, be more e Docker like in each uh, container has its own uh, file system. The biggest drawback to it is it uh, requires a custom uh, kernel. And if you don't have a kernel that uh, you, you want to use a different kernel, well, too bad you have to recompile it and you have the stuff you want. The biggest drawback. Uh, LXC uh, is the, the next step along the way. And it was what uh, Docker originally started out being basically an orchestration to run it. Uh, it it uh, is very much like the other ones we're talking about here, except for it, for the first time, mainlined its, uh, the stuff it needs into the, the actual kernel. So you can just run any vanilla kernel on it, and everything works great. Uh, so now on to uh, the... Uh, better, more modern stuff. Uh, Docker, like I hinted, started as a uh, open, uh, sorry, a uh, LXC uh, uh, orchestration system. Uh, it, as you can tell, sort of built on all the previous ideas that came along and then added in an idea that you can have uh, a uh, layered file system uh, that you can store in the uh, in like a Docker Hub or something like that, and so if uh, you want a copy of uh, Debian, well, you just say, okay, give me a copy of Debian, and you don't have to sit there and run the install and go through all that. Uh, it is very much targeted towards ephemeral, uh, and uh, is meant to be portable. So if it runs on my machine, I know it's going to run on your machine. It solves that whole developer uh, problem of, well, it works fine on my machine. I don't know what's wrong with you. Uh, and the big downside is it still is a single point of failure. And uh, it operates, uh, all of its stuff is run via uh, one running daemon that is running as uh, root. So if uh, bad things happen and your uh, Docker daemon crashes, well, Tough. You, you just have to restart it again because all your containers died. Uh, and of course, running this root is a huge security concern. Uh, so as you can see here, you have the client, so the, the API that runs, and it connects into the daemon, it pulls images, and it spins up containers, and they're stored in the Docker Hub. In other uh, Linux news uh, this week, uh, uh, Docker ended up selling their uh, Docker uh, uh, the business uh, version of Docker to a, another company. I, I forget their name offhand, but uh, so Docker now is just concentrating on the open source side of things, and I'm assuming selling the support contracts still or something. They they got a whole bunch of venture capital money out of it and. 
the money for selling it, so I guess they'll keep running for a while longer. It, it, the good news is we don't have to rely on them uh, surviving. The, the name of the company they sold to escapes me, but Mur there's a... Yes. What's it called? M-I-R-A-N-T-I-S. According to yeah. bizjournals.com. And how much money? <laughs> so, a lot. But so so anyway, what would it be? 35 so million in now? financing and well, total. I mean, before there were two versions. There were, were yeah. Open source. But they were, one was based on the other. Yes, and I so think that will still... Two entities and one is still going to be based on the other? I, I think that's still going to be at least moving forward. Uh, the same people will be doing it. They just bought the people, basically, is what it sounded like. Uh, and so, I don't know. Uh, this only dropped this week, and uh, the, the whole world is sort of going, what? So stay tuned. Get more to follow. Boys are cattle, right? Yes. So well, isn't that scrum? But uh, so anyway, though, uh, one of the best things about Docker is you have the, the Docker Hub. There's other uh, image uh, repositories too. Uh, Red Hat has one. Uh, you can stand up your own if you really want to, uh, whether free or etc. But, uh, for example, here you have uh, the Cheers uh, repository, or the Cheers image that uh, just will say Cheers. It's fairly easy, but yes. If you notice the CPU architecture supported, there's going to be a change coming. There's one missing. Risk 5 is yes. coming up. Uh, so if you're close enough, you can see that uh, you can run Cheers in Windows, Linux, PowerPC, IBM, ARM, ARM64, etc. And you know that it's blessed by Docker because it's an official image. Uh, another example is if you want to have Nginx, you don't have to set it up or do any of the work to make sure that it's up to date. If you want to uh, have all the latest security updates, if the package maintainers are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing, you just uh, rebuild your image and hey, you have all of these security updates. So the good news is, in theory, you don't have to be nearly as good at securing things uh, and staying up to date on all the stuff because that's what the maintainers are supposed to be doing. I know, we, that's a, a pie in the sky sort of dream. Well, but you said you have to rebuild the image to get the version? Yes. So it's the same as applying patch in a lot of cases? And the other big version, or other big problem is, I know at least in Windows, they're very more tight, tightly coupled to what version the host is running. So if you're like Microsoft and just rolled out a new uh, update uh, this last week and uh, deprecated all of the old stuff, now uh, all of my CICD processes just fail. I'm still mildly mad about that. This is Linux, so we keep moving on. <laughs> uh, but the, the other thing to note here is that you can have, okay, I want Nginx with Perl. I want Nginx uh, running on Alpine. I want it running as mainline, wh whatever mystery meat uh, image that's actually running. You can uh, apply what tag you want, and you'll get that version of it. So as an example here, I'm going to run Cheers, and there you can see the whale uh, swimming back and forth in the martini glass. And if I want to run something a little more seriously, uh, I can go ahead and run uh, Debian bash. Uh, so the commands here, I'm saying run this image interactively, and then delete the, uh, the image when it's uh, done with that double dash RM. So as you can see, here I am now running inside of Bash, and now I'm back out. Specifically, it's still a bitch. Yes. Tell me the image will still stick on. Yes. Uh, and Unless you don't want to run Purge uh, if you want to completely clean up. Or in theory, it should clean up after itself uh, eventually when, once you start to run out of disk space. 
which can be annoying. You can, can there are configurations that you can do to lock it down a little bit more than that, but. So there you can see it pulled down the images or uh, layers from uh, the, uh, the cloud and now it's running. Since it's really not interactive because it's a web server, it's just sort of sitting there. And if we were to hit it, uh, if you opened up the port, you could actually see the this is Nginx Hello World uh, page. Uh, so how you create a Docker image is with a Docker file. Uh, you can see from Ubuntu 14.04, a little old, but hey, let's go with it. And uh, you can define the maintainer. This is the guy who was nice enough to create Tausay for us. And then what is he doing? He uh, runs apt-get to install uh, Tausay and Fortunes, and then cleans up some temporary files so that they're not uh, just crowding up the image and then uh, runs the command fortune and then pipes it through Kause, which if you're not uh, familiar with either one of those, we'll take a look here of what happens once it downloads here. What kind of bandwidth are you using to support that? Uh, this is a uh, DSL line, so that's why it took so long to, to download. And then you can see it's running or no, actually, this was a VM up in the cloud, so it's a data center. And there you can see the little cow is saying the, uh, the fortune, which just happens to randomly be a quote from uh, uh, the great uh, Linus in announcement of uh, the uh, uh, Linux uh, kernel 1.3.26, which was like a long time ago. Uh, so there are uh, efforts to move away from the game and running as uh, root. Uh, it's still very, very experimental. Uh, this guy gave a, a talk at uh, DockerCon this year. If you really want to uh, uh, be at the edge of your seat for a full like hour and a half, uh, the, the guy cleared through at least a slide a minute. He, it was impressive and operating it like this far above it, my head. So it was amazing and I, I felt both dumber and uh, better for listening to it. But uh, basically it uh, will run as, uh, so let's say if I invoke it to run, it will be running as myself. Uh, the daemon will be running as my user, so anything that I can see, it can see, but like say for example, uh, if, if you want to get out and access uh, uh, Sean's files over there, uh, I can't see them, so even if you think you're root inside the container, you're not. It's all lies. So the biggest uh, downfall to that is that uh, all the stuff that you can't do is root outside in the real world, you can't do inside the container. So let's say if you want to uh, uh, mount some ports that are, uh, let's say if you wanted to mount port 80, well, you can't because you're not root. Now, of course, inside the container, you can have port 80 exposed, but only inside of its own little world. It's uh, using the sub-user and sub-group uh, ideas inside of Linux. And uh, the biggest uh, pain point that I have that drives me nuts is if you're using uh, Microsoft Active Directory as your uh, and uh, LDAP and all that stuff for your uh, uh, user authentication to be able to log on to your machines. Unless you do some special magic to make it work, uh, it doesn't work for you yet because the uh, uh, sub-user and uh, so the sub-process and uh, sub-group IDs don't actually work. Uh, also, unless you're using Ubuntu, uh, overlay FS doesn't work yet. So you end up using a lot more disk space. And uh, if you want to play around with it, there's a great Katakoda uh, project that you just, in your web browser, you can uh, go all the way from installing it to uh, 
playing around with it, and it will walk you through it. It's great, interesting time. We'll keep moving here. We'll keep moving here. Well, that is completely not readable in this light, but uh, in the beginning there was Docker. Now there's the Cloud Native Container uh, Foundation, and it's supposed to be the spot that's coordinating all of the Docker-like stuff together. Uh, it's part of the Greater Linux Foundation. Is it better neutered or neutral? Uh, it's supposed yes. to be neutral. <laughs> <laughs> uh, spelling is hard. Uh, yeah, uh, so think of it's like Apache, except for less broad in what it's doing. You got to keep the humanities people in focus. Yeah, yeah it, it, to, to be fair, this was about uh, 1 a.m. when I was writing this, so That's and all right. spell check loves me. It's funny, but I did not see that at all. I didn't check it until said. after I went. I only said it because it was particularly amusing. Yeah. <laughs> but so uh, projects that are part of it uh, include Kubernetes, uh, Prometheus, Envoy, Containerd, and a whole bunch of others. Uh, Kubernetes we'll be talking about in a little bit here. Prometheus is, if I remember right, a logging and uh, sort of being able to monitor your uh, images uh, system. Uh, Actually, this was showing right. I could see. This uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, there, there's better uh, descriptions in the uh, presenter's notes, which apparently aren't showing up right now. Uh, but uh, Container D is uh, sort of the Docker daemon, except for not Docker. Uh, so uh, as you can see here, there's a lot of stuff here in Container D, a whole lot of moving parts, and it talks to uh, Container or Run C or the Windows Runner or Kata C or Kata images, which are a uh, VM like or a virtual machine that can run Docker images. It, it adds for more uh, uh, interprocess protection in between the images and stuff like that. It, I'd never heard of it, but yeah. Uh, and then the, the other big thing is up here in the container uh, platform, you have Moby, which is Docker's half-hearted attempt to be open source and not Docker. Uh, there's some talk of now that they've split off and they're their own company again, uh, possibly folding it back in, but again, there's discussions. Uh, Pouch is actually uh, Alibaba's uh, Docker container system. Uh, it apparently adds more uh, uh, ability to uh, watch what your containers are doing and harness uh, and uh, basically monitor and uh, uh, tool toolings around that. You can see why the Chinese did that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, there's Docker. Yeah. If you're running a large data center worth of stuff, I, I get it. It makes sense. Which uh, they, they are the Amazon AWS of the Chinese world right now. So, and some Europe. Yes. Uh, so uh, Pouch. Uh, I'd never heard of them, but uh, one of the biggest notes is that you can distribute images back and forth via uh, Dragonfly peer-to-peer -peer networking. So let's say if I, I have a container and you want it to uh, be a peer-to-peer, -peer, you don't have to hit the main repository, which is great if you're running a large data center full of stuff all using the same image, I guess. That's cool and terrifying at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> but there's a bunch more hooks and magic available. Uh, I was kind of nervous to install it on my machine, plus it kind of ran out of time. So <laughs> it's an exercise to uh, play with it uh, at your own risk. Uh, Kata, like I mentioned, uh, was a open source project uh, working uh, on lightweight virtual machines that feel and look like containers but have better workload isolation. And uh, because I didn't have a fresh machine to install it on, uh, and basically there's no Docker image for it, it, it was kind of hard to demo. 
uh, but they have a website, and so you can see that you have basically it's a drop-in replacement, and you can run Docker on top of it, and it knows no difference. It's completely uh, compatible, and will then run the container inside of a hypervisor, basically. I have to imagine there's probably some major uh, performance hits yeah. around this, but <laughs> if you're paranoid, it, it can be helpful. What's the point? That's what I was thinking, Take but... Those Docker files, you get access to yeah. the if you need one of those Docker files. I know VMware also is now, there's versions that are compatible to run Docker images and Docker files. I guess it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Except, 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 problems that go along with virtualizing the whole thing. Yeah. They, they, they promise so lightly, so I take them at their word. Uh, yeah, I'm not so sure about that. Yeah. Moby is uh, sort of their open source, Docker's open source framework to help if you want to make your own uh, containerization stack. It's basically there to hold your hand, but basically, Anyone who's not rolling your own entire container or ecosystem, just use Docker or one of the other ones. You, you don't need to get that far in the weeds. And as you can see, you can insert your component here. Think of it as sort of like a cell phone MVNO. If you want to use their orchestration, image management, all that stuff, and then just insert your special sauce, you can. Uh, Docker Compose, not really its own containerization system, but think of it as like an orchestrator for, okay, I want to stand up a, uh, a blog. So I'm going to need a database, I'm going to need a web server, and I'm going to need uh, oh, a firewall to sit in front of it or something like that. Okay, rather than having to hand roll each of those and make sure that, okay, is my database server running? It, it needs to come up before the web server comes up all of those things, it will actually handle it. Uh, it's great for automated testing, or uh, let's say if you have a dev environment, or if you have, aren't big enough to need Kubernetes, or just are too lazy to go through all the trouble of standing up Kubernetes because it's hard. You I mean just buy one gig 96 core server and who the heck needs <laughs> the, the biggest problem is, though, when uh, the uh, janitor unplugs the server to plug in their vacuum cleaner, <laughs> now all of your stuff just went offline. Yeah. The intern unplugs the server, sir. Yes. All of those have happened, I'm sure. They should have told me where it was plugged in. Didn't Actually, the server's supposed to have dual power supply. Uh, if you're cheap enough for that, you're going to be able to Anyway, though, it's a great YAML file, and it... Basically, if you want to uh, you define what networks you have, uh, that you have an Nginx server that's running Alpine, expose those ports, go ahead and build uh, this, uh, build an image that is this uh, Rust file, and it just goes through all the uh, trouble of building it, and then spins it up and runs it, and then you're uh, good to go. So this uh, Docker file, this is what builds it. So it builds from Rust, runs the, the cargo installs, and then uh, uh, builds it, and we're good to go, and then runs it. Is this actually you this service? Yes. Does that mean you're dabbling in the Rust land now? Uh, yes, briefly. Kyle made me do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, sorry, as an aside. Uh, so, th this is just a stupid toy Rust uh, program that runs as a web server. Uh, Docker Swarm is Docker's attempt at making a Kubernetes-like thing. Pretty much at this point, it still exists, but it's really deprecated. Strongly, probably shouldn't use it, but uh, it isn't, it's easier to use in the fact that it's all YAML-based files. And you can have a pool of Docker hosts all together. And uh, it's easier to use in a Kubernetes cluster, but pretty much the entire industry has moved away from it. So like all things I like, 
I picked the wrong horse. So it's kind of like VHS versus the Betamax. Do you think that's mostly just because people's name recognition is the maintainer, and like everyone thinks like, well, if everything goes to hell, like Docker could go bankrupt tomorrow, but Google probably won't. Yes, I completely and totally. Uh, which moves us on to Kubernetes here. It originally started as uh, Project Borg, uh, and it's sort of like how uh, Docker Swarm was. It's orchestration across multiple hosts. If one of those hosts dies, sort of furthering this whole cattle idea, well, that's okay, the other ones will pick up the slack. And they're all networked together, and uh, you can add, mount storage, and it's basically an entire ecosystem in and of itself. And uh, via the fabric uh, networking, you don't even need to know where your uh, container is running. It's magic. Well, I think the other thing that really is next level about Kubernetes that I see so far is Helm. Can you talk about Helm later on? Uh, no, I. Helm, Helm is really cool because it is the same as Docker Hub or Docker Images, but for clusters. So they have a repository where you can download cluster images, which will like, pull down the entire cluster. You'll have one config file that will like, define how many nodes you want and like, what versions of what config. And it'll automatically populate all the like, sub-configs down to the individual servers. So like, if you want a multi-node Mongo server, you can just fill up one config file, down, or like, you can your Helm, download like, your Helm package from MongoDB, fill up one config file, throw it in a Kubernetes cluster, and like, Seven node cluster, MongoDB, going right now, yeah, buddy. And you don't have to know anything about actually like hooking up all the different nodes to each other and things like that. So, yeah. One of the biggest nice to have, Sarah, is if you're standing up a, uh, say, like uh, a new cluster, there's a lot of moving parts there, and it's a lot of work to get right. And, and, and I've, I've don't done, have to. I've done a similar thing with Elasticsearch, and there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of crap that I can really know. And this is just oh, this is a one config file for the whole freaking cluster. It's like uh, the one word in there. I cannot figure out what they really mean by that. Uh, so if you have, let's say, you, you have uh, two containers that shouldn't be next to each other because they're both very noisy, you can say, I don't want this image to run next to this other one on the same host. on the same host. So uh, let's say if I have a uh, mission critical thing, I, I can say, hey, I, I don't want it running next to the uh, accounting reports or something like that. Or another thing with like, like I would assume this how this would work in a Helm Elasticsearch. You don't ever want two of your nodes that are like the master nodes running on the same server because if that one server goes down, your whole thing is code. So you like want to split, you know, each of the master nodes out between multiple servers and that, you know, all the slave nodes can do whatever the hell they want. And preferably, possibly, even on a separate rack. Yeah. Or even separate data sets, right? Yep. Okay. So, uh, speaking a little bit about the architecture here, as you can see, there's uh, multiple worker nodes, and then a master that's in charge of scheduling, and then stuff around how to this container can figure out that this one's over here. And as you can see, you can even have multiple versions of uh, that container running in uh, separate, uh, essentially think of them as namespaces, pods. And so uh, this container run one running in pod three can't see container one running in pod two. And it, it's all magic as long as it works. You as the end user don't have to worry about it. Uh, if you don't want to have a full Kubernetes cluster, you can have K3S, which uh, uh, it's kind of an internal joke. Apparently, the uh, marketing people at Rancher are really mad at the developers for naming it K3S because it's like almost impossible to get any name recognition out of it. Because it, what is that? Uh, well, Kubernetes is abbreviated as K8, five less than uh, eight is three. So Hey, look, it's a light version of Kubernetes. Uh, they, they sell it as the uh, all the good parts, but only in uh, 40 meg worth of uh, uh, package. It's somewhat experimental still. It's meant uh, really especially for like uh, edge or fog computing. And uh, 
so like say you have at a uh, Chick-fil-A uh, restaurant a small stack of cups running in the corner as their data center. Which means they actually do this. Yes. Uh, or like say at a cell phone tower station you have a stack of things running your images there to keep track of how are things going, which they also actually do. Uh, they basically they cut out all the alpha uh, legacy hardware and other non-default code paths, and uh, also got rid of uh, a bunch of other stuff that just isn't really all that useful. And instead of uh, running a full etcd uh, by default, it's just a uh, simple SQLite uh, database, and it just makes life really, really easy. So uh, it uses uh, Flannel for its networking, Core DNS to help figure out where stuff is at, and uh, then uh, uses like IP tables on the host to uh, get it running. It's really easy to install, just go to GitHub, and uh, Loads up. See if I can make that a little bit bigger. So, uh, here as you can see, you just run curl, download a random script off the internet, and pipe it into uh, SH because I, I trust everything I find on the internet. <laughs> no one could ever hustle about the memory, never. You get the URL from Pound Pack. <laughs> on IRC. Uh, so since I already had it installed, you can rerun it again and it will just update it to the latest version. Since I ran it like five minutes before, there wasn't any latest version. Uh, but so you just start it up. Uh, and then uh, you can run the, the kubectl git node. And you can see I have a uh, Kubernetes cluster of one. It's a very lonely number. But uh, then you can uh, just run a uh, interactive image that is Ubuntu. And I'm going to just run bash inside of it just to prove that I can. And of course, it yells at you because that's the old way of doing it. And see, now I'm running an uh, image inside of the, the cluster here. And since I didn't set any networking, it doesn't work. Anyway, though, flipping back to PowerPoint here, uh, Podman is, uh, see the presentation last month? Uh, we already uh, kind of covered it, uh, but the, the big thing is it doesn't have a Docker daemon, and uh, you can sort of run uh, rootless the same way as Docker with the same shortcomings. Uh, it's uh, uh, Red Hat's sort of backed it fully uh, with uh, the, the latest version that came out, which is uh, uh, Red Hat 8. And as we can see here, you can run just the same way that you'd uh, run, if I could type, uh, you can run uh, the exact same commands that you run for Docker. And it works exactly the same. And after it downloads here, huh. it will give you a fortune. Uh, so as you can see, with Docker you have the daemon that's in charge of running everything. Uh, their podman executes and spins off stuff and is responsible for calling directly into the kernel. Uh, again, see last month's presentation. Uh, Builda is the other thing that uh, Red Hat is sort of uh, backed. It's a uh, container management uh, lifecycle build uh, program. Uh, you can make uh, Docker and 
other compatible images uh, without having a local copy of Docker installed. Uh, it is somewhat problematic to try and run it inside of a, a Docker image because it uh, expects to be able to use uh, the uh, uh, layered file system and that really doesn't like running inside of itself. Uh, but uh, you can also uh, build images via bash script and one of the big uh, gotchas is with uh, Docker uh, the, the Docker files, each line is a separate layer. Uh, this you can group and do a whole bunch of stuff together and just uh, then store it as one layer, which uh, can be nice if you have a lot of stuff that you're doing. As an example here, we're going to build a uh, image. Build an image. Again, typing is hard. So you can see right here, I don't have any images yet. I don't have any containers. And I'm setting just a uh, environment variable just to stop me from having to type so much. So I'm saying build a from Fedora. And it goes ahead and uh, downloads uh, the Fedora image here. So we'll fast forward a little bit. Done. This one was on my DSL, which is why it's running a bit slower. Okay, so now you can see that uh, we've uh, started with a manifest there, and now you can see that it's a Fedora working container is the, the variable there. And so then you can just go ahead and say, okay, build a run inside this container image that I'm building, bash. And there it is operating. And then fr from there inside that, uh, you could go ahead and build other stuff and then eventually persist that off. So now I'm going to run Java, you see it's not installed. Okay, let's fix that. <coughs> By typing run container Java, or sorry, I want to run uh, uh, dandified uh, the, the package man manager to install Java. And now you can see it's starting to install, which is going to take a little while, so let's fast forward to make uh, time go faster. And it's still working on it. Let's just go ahead. And, uh, okay, there we are still installing because job is huge and yay. It's a quick note while you wait. Uh, yes. there's, a, there's a software called Panico from Google which does uh, handle that, like, you want to run Milda inside a Java container, uh, and not have everything go to hell. Yeah. There's a product called Canico from Google that's supposed to do that. Oh, cool. How's that spelled? Uh, K-N-I-K-O, lots of Ks. Okay, so I have go went ahead and finished installing, and now you can see I can run uh, Docker, or run Java inside of that. Hooray. What's that? Uh, so the other thing that you can do is it is uh, compatible with uh, just a normal Docker file. There you can see all I'm doing is uh, grabbing the latest Fedora, uh, running update, and installing Apache. 
and the command you use is bud for build uh, using docker. I got nothing. <laughs> but uh, it helps if you can spell. And then it looks just like your normal Docker build process. So nothing major to report here. And there's an example of how you can use uh, the builder run and uh, set in annotations and uh, expose ports and etc. just via uh, bash uh, script. And then you can uh, persist it out and run it. And that was all I had uh, for uh, the uh, containerization showdown. Uh, really, Docker and Kubernetes are still the 800 pound gorillas in the room, but especially with uh, the way things are happening in the Docker space and how shaky they are on uh, financial grounds, who knows what's going to happen in the next little while. The good news is the container space is rich, and uh, even if they do die, uh, long live Docker. The Moby. Yes. The Moby is going to like hide themselves out. Like, shit, never comes <laughs> So anyway, though, uh, that, that was uh, our presentation for the uh, the week. Uh, next month. Uh, we don't have a presentation yet. However, uh, one of the things that uh, we will be talking about is sort of a retrospective of how are we doing as a lug and uh, what do we want to be doing for the next year or year. Uh, there was some uh, not really heated discussion, but uh, um, they, there were some opinions on what exactly uh, we, we need to do to keep uh, uh, the wheels on the bus here, and uh, uh, just exactly how do we stay sustainable? Because uh, uh, unfortunately, I I'm starting to run out of stuff to talk about uh, for presenting. So uh, other presenters are very much appreciated, and I know there have been a couple of remote uh, presenters who have uh, volunteered as well to uh, uh, present. Uh, who one of the guys lives in uh, Iowa City, and I'm not really sure where uh, uh, the, the red uh, guy is uh, in. Uh, last I knew he was in the East Coast, but he has been here at one point. Yeah, uh, but anyway, though, his uh, Slack handle is slightly more... Uh, Anyway, though, uh, uh, so if you have something that you've uh, sort of been wanting to hear about or feel brave enough to present yourself, hey, if I can do it, I have faith that you can. You also got some entertainment options that I'm planning for. Yes, and uh, Dan has offered to host some. Uh, so this will be December, on a Sunday evening, probably, because we have free parking down there. So. Uh, and of course, uh, one, one of the big things uh, we're going to be working on is getting a sort of questionnaire out to the uh, listserv about even if you can't make it to next month's meeting, well, what is it that you're, you're looking for and how can we best serve the Linux community here? Uh, and then at some point, we really probably do need to have elections again because it's been a couple of years. And find out. The ruling hunt has been doing pretty well. Yeah. Uh, so uh, anyway, though, uh, they, there'll be some discussion both on, both on the listserv and uh, on the Slack channel on just exactly what are questions in that uh, questionnaire. So if you feel strongly about it, please join us for the discussion. And also at our uh, next location that we'll be moving to here after our presentation, which is the, the beverage and provisions part of the uh, meeting. Uh, I believe we're going to be going to uh, 
uh, Fonz Pizza. So uh, you're welcome to join us and uh, have a uh, soda or other frothy beverage of your choosing. They always ask us a number. So does anyone know 100% yes I'm going or 100% no I'm Yeah, going? are you going? I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. Going. Okay. So are the hands going or not going? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So like seven. So we know seven are going. Does that mean the rest know they're not going? You guys want to do that? No, they're not. Seven, 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 and uh, then a talk. Be renting a bus. And then he, he talked about uh, where are we going from here. Also, you mean to have a discussion? Yes. Yeah. No, because we'll have that that retrospective. And also, if you can't make it, we'll try again to have the online uh, meeting. I don't know if there's anyone still on the line here. Uh, Figure out how to get back here. Even if they're not still there, I don't really appreciate it. I said even if they're not still there, listen, I'm sure they appreciate the portion they could hear. So, Andy, yes, you can take a check. Maybe like a tour of the map. I found the sign for the map. I don't know. I'm sorry. 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 I don't know. It's been changing so much over the past. But if we had that so much like 10 years ago, yeah. it might have been when we For example, uh, currently Katie runs up with memories and is that the lead or is it the rest of you have to use? I was the one in red. That looks like I was in the car. Or no, he's the guy who was in the car. No, I think he's in the car. And then I believe that it's just uh, uh, that just seems wrong. wrong. Uh, uh, I've been inviting for years. He's up in the news. So he gave me the fact that he's a lot of these. 